Hello, this is Book of Day, and today I'm going to be talking about Shadow Worlds by Justin Sloan. Now, Shadow Worlds has a light lit RPG element to it, very light. A lit RPG is a book based around a RPG engine that you'd see in a tabletop or video game. We continue following Samantha and her squad, the Shadow Corps. They are a sort of space specs op team, but you can kind of just think of them as the Guardians of the Galaxy without the 80s references. The book starts off with our team getting some rest and recover at the Citadel, but little did they know the High Council were plotting to incarcerate them due to their inadequacy to protect one of the High Council members who died in the first book. They arrest Hadrian, and he tells Samantha, who was with him at the time, to uh, run away. In turn, she gets herself and the team out of the situation. In some point of their escape, they end up running into a large group of the enemy. Spaceships. Meanwhile, Hadrian is over here pulling magic out of his butt, aka showing us more of what his uh, inherent abilities are, and meeting back up with the team... About a few hours later. Like, what was the point of the situation? Now going rogue, they are continuing to protect the universe against the Great Deceivers. In order to get started, they have to go back to Earth, where Hadrian talks to the Syndicate Invasion leader. While doing so, for whatever reason, he takes only Samantha with him and expects her not to lose her mind. Unstable 16-year-old, very powerful weapons. Great choice, Hadrian. Great choice. These weapons include a biotech armor and a biotech deliciatite cloak and upgradable guns and swords with experience points. This is our light element of lit RPG. It feels more like an afterthought. During Hadrian's discussion with the Syndicate Lord, Samantha spots a monitor that has her old squad on it from the Resistance. More accurately, she saw David, and then she loses her mind and runs off to go save him after she almost attacked and killed the syndicate leader. Yeah, 16-year-old, unstable. You know where this is going. She literally flies off to go and save them because Hadrian taught her how to fly using the mental connection to matter ability that she happens to have. She cuts through about a quarter of the army, finds a situation where she can save one person, grabs David, yeets him out of that situation, watches all of her other squad members get blown up, and then sits there and goes, at least David is safe. Oh, wow, there's the blonde again, and there they are embracing. This is the blonde girl that... David had a thing going with from the first book and part of the reason why she didn't have a reason to stick around on Earth to continue helping the Syndicate invasion. Sticking to the shadows and not letting them know who saved David, she runs off and goes back to Hadrian, who was in an encounter with Syndicate and then he finds out also the Scrapulent, which is a mind control alien race. They give a little backstory saying that they weren't always like this. I'll let you guys figure out that on your own, of course. And that's just a quick summary of the first three hours of the book. It's not long winded, it's more that it's fast paced and a little out of control. A few characters of note are. A good portion of book two is focused on Napalm and Karma. It focuses more on their background and building their characters. And giving some much needed life to the uh, universe as a whole. Now there's much more in this book than I've covered here. So if you want to find it, you can find it on Audible. It's currently free with the Audible membership. That's how I picked it up. Book 1 through 4 is currently available as of the time of this video. Personally, I want to give this one a 3.5. The book didn't really pick up in, like, action as much as setting a good direction and learning more about what the universe has to offer as a whole. Alrighty, this has been Book A Day, and you guys have a good day.